Okay, time. time to get an update on the Turbo 4.8 build. Had no intentions on doing a full engine build at this particular juncture. My goal was just to get my craft running by the uh, April 27th on my birthday. As I get a decent amount of work done every week between now and then. I should be able to get it done or at least get it in there close to running. Okay, guys. I've already got the block, crankshaft, and all that stuff done to that 2002 block. But I just wanted you guys to see this because I was getting ready to pull the piston rings off. I'm hoping this shows up in the video. If you look at the top half of that rod bearing, it has like chatter marks or like lines that go across the bearing side to side. So it's not caused by oil contamination or anything running through the bearing. Okay, I wiped it off and I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can to the screen. Hopefully it will focus. But you, I hope you guys, I can see it so clear in person, but you can see little fine chattering of some kind on that upper rod bearing half. I went ahead and cleaned the tops off the pistons before I even pulled them out of the block. So basically now I just got to pull these, you know, 300,000 mile rings off, clean them off, get the ring grooves clean. Everything out. feels good. I checked all the, you know, made sure there was no bearing issues before disassembly. I've checked the piston pins. They feel tight and have freedom of movement. At this point, it's just clean them up and get them ready to, ready to get back in service. I think it's a two liter bottle tr uh, tray. These things make excellent uh, piston organizers if you ever see them at swap meets or at yard sales or anything like that. Okay guys, here are the 862s off of the uh, 2000 4.8. I just wanted to show you guys how the Easy Off oven cleaner and the pressure washer at the car wash basically got all the carbon out of the exhaust ports probably 60 to 70 percent out of the intake ports because there's no spark plugs in these i couldn't fill the ports with the cleaner like i could on the exhaust side uh down in the valley or the part of the head where the valve cover seals was super dark and built up with that burnt on engine oil it all came out the deck surface not as important because I'm gonna have these things surface 10 thousandths to get the chambers down to 59 cc. But look at that. You know what I mean? How can you beat a $12 cleanup on a set of absolutely horrendously dirty cylinder heads? I'm gonna reserve one week of my timeline to try to get those ready to put on the engine. Guys, there's the 2002 4.8 cylinder block for 2002 crank that was sent in and polished at the machine shop uh, right now it's just set up with the bearings to, to check the clearance I was unsuccessful in locating a working torque angle gauge I went to the local advanced auto parts wasted twelve dollars and ninety nine cents it was like fourteen something on uh, their cheap off-the-shelf uh, torque angle gauge or meter you use do not buy that thing it is absolute junk thank God I decided to mock up an extra piston and rod in my vice just to kind of run through how the tool worked to make sure I was doing it correctly it uh, was so inaccurate that at some point in time, you know, it was allowing me to turn and tighten the fastener sometimes 45 degrees or more of rotation before the little needle even started to move on the, on the gauge. You know what I'm saying? Run as far away as you can from that cheap $12.99 tool they have on the shelf at Advanced Auto Parts. But... I'm getting ready to check the ring gap on my rings and I just wanted you guys to see 
where I was at on this thing you know it's got it has easy movement it's been lubed with you know you guys can go out and buy all those high dollar uh, engine assembly lubes that some of them are green I'll throw that out there some of them are red some of them are purple you know what that is guys that's straight STP oil treatment that they put coloring in but it's up to you if you like to buy their name brand and, and feel feel good about it that's fine but I learned a long time ago when I worked at Street Thunder Speed Shop the best thing you can use for engine assembly on the bearings is straight STP oil treatment and that basically a lot of these big engine builders and parts producers knew that was the best thing you could use for engine assembly so what they do they started putting food coloring in it and charging you three or four times as much so anyway something to think about let's get over here and play with these piston One rings of the benefits to the ls engine the top piston rings are actually steel like if you go on and look a lot of piston rings that you get your top piston ring is made of cast iron or ductile you know iron just like your second rings normally are what happens on older engines once you heat cycle your piston rings a couple of times you try to take them on and off of a piston they break or they crack and even just a fracture line ends up being a broken piston ring once the engines in service so What's cool about the LS engines is that the top ring is steel, not cast iron. And a lot of people, they go on, they want to do turbo builds, and they're actually able to pull that top ring on and off the piston because that steel is more forgiving and allows them to do a you know ring gap on their top ring and put it back together. I'm using the engine tech replacement. Oh, you know, they're OEM quality replacement piston rings the reason being is that was one of the few sets I found through star that had the steel top ring and I wanted to be able to you know have the same exact piston ring setup as the factory sent out the door because we all know their stuff works well I mess with it so that's what I'm doing right now getting ready to do uh, stick those down in the bores and find out exactly where I'm at and whether I'm going to need, need to do any gap increasing. I'm hoping that they're not too big to start hey, with. Just a tip, I wanted to interject right here real quick. And I don't want anybody going out and jumping on other YouTubers or people that are sharing their builds or anything like that. They were literally gapping all their piston rings using the same cylinder of a block that they weren't even building okay so let I mean let, let's just think about this there's gonna be machining tolerances where you know different wear in a used block different honing different ring I, I think it should go without saying that each ring should be gapped in the cylinder it's going to be run in and left that way now, if you're uh, juggling, this is what we used to do at the speed shop. If you put all eight of your rings in, check all their gaps, you may have cylinders that are slightly wider or slightly tighter, and you can move your rings around from cylinder to cylinder. Consistent ring gap on an engine. I mean, that's, you know, people do that. I'm not saying anything bad about that. But I'm just saying, you can't just take a set of rings and go, oh, I'm going to gap these rings at 26,000, throw them in a one cylinder one at a time, and expect that to be done properly when you assemble an engine. I just hope everybody's on board with, you know, that kind of goes without saying, but I've actually seen someone do it recently. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw out, gap your ring in your cylinder as it's going to be assembled okay guys i've got all the top rings in there you know at this point they can be moved wherever because they're not gapped or set or anything like that basically all i'm using to set up the ring is one of the pistons 
I took the top first and second rings off, left the oil control rings on there. Let me get this pulled up here where you can. So basically what you want to do to save yourself a lot of hassle, put the ring in the cylinder with the gap down at the bottom. You don't want them all up in here where you're bending down going, what am I going to do? If you're going to do your, check your gaps, put them all at the bottom of the cylinder so they're easy for you. But basically you're just going to take a ring out of the pack, set it in, once it's in, it's in. Take your piston, we'll call this your aligning tool, and when you go to put this in, I mean, don't go crazy with it, just set it in, and as soon as the piston stops, your ring is where it needs to be to check your gap. It's that simple. No special tools required. Just a clean, or moderately clean, piston works great. Now I'm going to get the measuring with my feeler gauge and just kind of see what kind of ring gap I'm starting with. You don't want to force your feeler gauge in. You want it to fall in the ring gap and be able to slide back and forth without moving the piston ring. Literally want to drop it in and have freedom of movement with maybe a slight bit of drag as long as it doesn't move the piston ring. I was doing a little bit of research online earlier. Piston ring manufacturers, they're saying under 15 pounds or less of boost that you're only supposed to use a multiplier of five and a half thousand. So it'd be 0 0.0055 per your cylinder bore. Okay, this is a 3.78 bore engine times point, you know, five and a half per inch of cylinder bore, that's like 21 thousandths top ring gap. Okay, you go to a different manufacturer, they say, okay, anything in that range, use a multiplier of six. So six thousandths per bore, now you're up to 22. So I just need to do some, a uh, little more research and online to kind of see what other people are doing on these low boost, daily driven pump gas street engines because I absolutely don't want to run into any kind of blow-by issues or oil consumption issues with too wide of a ring gap. Okay, may, many people may not know, so I'll throw this in there. The more boost you throw in an engine, the wider your ring gap has to be. So it's not uncommon to see 26, 28, 30, 32 thousandths ring gap on these high, you know, higher boost pressure engines. That's not a good combo for a daily drive. You're going to have to do a little bit of research and make a decision. You're supposed to be plus or, plus or minus two thousandths on your ring gap, depending on whether it's your first ring or your second ring, to uh, alleviate piston ring flutter under boost. So there's another little piece of information we need to research and find out, hey, which one needs to be what size, and let's get that all figured out. You go through this process and you file your rings and you recheck on each cylinder with its perspective piston ring and you're going to bag those, bag and tag each set of rings for that cylinder so that whenever you go through and assemble this thing for real, some people like to use the term blueprinted, okay, no, it's done right, okay, if you're building your engine correctly, it's gonna get blueprinted. That just kind of goes without saying. So hold on to that thought. I'm gonna keep working on these piston rings. Probably just be hand filing whatever I need to do. But there are several different home methods for grinding ring, getting ready to do some piston ring gapping. Uh, do as much research as you can. Make sure you got all your bases covered and you know, take your time. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a time investment that'll be well worth it to the uh, longevity and the overall end project. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. I wanted to give you guys an update on what I was doing with the Turbo 4.8. I am on a time crunch, so I'm gonna try to get as many videos as I can fit in without uh, adversely affecting that timeline that I have to try to get all this work done, get it put together and get it running by April 27th on my birthday. So thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, share.